G'day, how you going? This is Ian Apples here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video today. I want to try and do something basic but effective in some beautiful light colours, like green, antique green. I've got a tube of it and I want to put it to use. So, <clears throat> I've got a canvas panel there in centimetres and inches. And um, also, while we're getting going, colours will go up the screen, what we're using as well in this painting. I've got my gloves on. A lot of people ask, what do you wear gloves for? It's to keep the paint off my hands. Plus also, it's a bit of a visual thing for the camera as well. It's, it's a bit of a prop as well. So there's that aspect of it as well. Now, oh, I haven't put water in my little pots yet. I'll do that in a minute. But um, yeah, so I want to have sort of like some light coming through with some foliage and maybe a stream or some something like that in the front of it, all right? We'll try and get it there. All right, I'll start with preparing the canvas with me craft paint, me soft white paint with some retarder mixed in there. And I'll get it all over this canvas, roughly. I'm starting from the center out because my main focus is gonna be in the center and what happens to the edge will be what will be. Now I've got this antique green, it's green grey in the tube and if you don't have this you can probably mix up some green and mute it down with white till you get this shade. Now I'll just pick up some of this because I want it very very light in the background so I'm using what's whites on here. Very so I'm virtually going to go into that. See, I've virtually got too much green with that now. So I'll put some more of that white in there to get it the value I like. All right, and then we'll, I'm going to crisscross out from the center, just like a big oval from the center. That's what I want. I love this. I used this in one of my waterfalls a while ago. I'm going to blend that just so it's soft and I've got a um, roll of paper towel there just to wipe me blending brushes it picks up some paint now I have some cadmium yellow light and I want to pick some of that up now and put into this mix just to get the, the vibrancy of that so you can see it's very pale there now I want to Put this into the center of that. Just opened and all over the place, grabbing the same blending brush, and I want to sit that down and merge it. So I've got light and dark values in the center there. You don't have to, do, you can just do it all the one value if you like. I'm getting some more of that green and more of the yellow and I'm making a more deeper and vibrant see of that and I want to leave the center as it is and just get this area here a bit darker now just stamping it on so we've pretty much got that and then we want to blend that so I'm Picking up the blending brush. Now I'll blend the, I want to soften this inside of that edge going into that brighter area in the middle. <clears throat> Just so we got this beautiful transition of the two values happening onto our canvas there. And if we need be, we can intense the middle a bit more. Now I want to get this out there. I've got some more cad yellow light because now I want this to be opened in so we'll get that up there and this light coming in because we're gonna have a big tree in the front there and then we'll blend that so from the top that retard is keeping this paint on my canvas nice and wet it's not dry it's great i might get that a bit brighter okay we'll see how we go 
So we've got that. All right, I've got some titanium white out the tube just to give that center some vibrancy. So pretty much like I've done mist in the sky, I want to get this in a artistic way, radiant, radianting out into this area here. So hopefully this white will do that. So I wanna, yeah, this, this is what I want it to do. So you can see that white dancing over those greens and yellows we've blended into the canvas. And we've got it sort of dark and light values just going up there like that. All right, now I want to get the lightest of this green just with this one first. So I don't want that much. The very palest. And start bringing this forward. That looks good in real life. I'm not sure what it's looking like on the camera, but now I want something sort of coming over in front of it darker as we get forward. So these are like distant trees in the background there, right? Just there, you can see that, beautiful. Some sort of different heights. I've just got a fan brush here for this. So we'll just line these distant trunks in the center here, okay? Then we can put some, you know, some foliage on these these are just way out there out of focus just something like there so I'll just finish stamping these foliages on these trunks in the distance there so you're pretty much left with that we can dry this because we're not doing any more blending and we're going to start bringing some more vibrant greens into the front so we'll get a um, really nice bright yellow green going, but we want it very, very bright, pretty much like that. Okay, so I've dried it, reasonable enough. Now I want to get some, like, I'm going to use this filbert brush here to get some type of um, all sorts of bush and stuff happening in here. I'm leaving bits opening, I'm doing like, if anything, umbrella shapes like that. All right, so this is that forest green mixed with the cadmium yellow light. And I'm sort of coming into the middle, but I'm slowly covering up some of this stuff as well. We get some of it way up in here. Making like taller trees that are closer. I've deliberately left some of the darker value there, just so as I can, as I'm blocking in, maybe get some just some darker values like that here and there because some of this I want some darker values but I'll do that when this is dry now I've dried that and like I said before I want some of that darker value now just slightly darker just so we can add some other elements within here, like that. And up the trees here. Not too much, don't do it too much. Just some darker elements. And like how normally, if you've done too much of the dark, you just simply come back with the lights and pop them back in as well. So I'll just finish putting these darker values in. Now I'm grabbing that light color that I mixed on, not the one I had the darker value to, and I've just got more yellow with it now, cadmium yellow light. I'm using my small detail filbert brush, and those darker values we just put on there before, that was the depth, so I can just put some detail foliage within it, just to make it a bit more up beyond a stamping product. So the lighter bit that I've blocked in before I added the darker bit, I'm getting that darker bit, bit with me little filbert just to accentuate the end of those ones out there in the open. Because if I could try and put light over the light, they're going to look invisible and you won't see them. So we're just getting this down there. 
some of it accentuated. Then we'll put this lighter color over those darker bits here. So I'll just quickly wash that brush, picking up the lighter one now. And they're going over this one. See now if I try to put them over the lighter bits, they'll look invisible. So we'll just finish these little foliages off with a bit of speed here. Look at that. I just added some pockets of forest green there, a bit darker, so I didn't quite put enough darks in there, so because this stuff is going over that darker tone here, but this one's gonna really create the depth just when I do this everywhere. Now this colour here, I've just put some white with it, just muted it down with some white. So the ends of this can have the, the light glaring on it and radiating through the middle some bits. I already did a little bit there. So just finish these highlights here off quickly. And those darker areas that we've put in there, we want well, I want this to sit in front to sink them back because we're looking through this canopy here. And this is just, this is that white muted into the paint there. So we're using the lights to sink back the darks, vice versa. I'll just grab some white titanium out of the tube there. I just might put some sort of element of a clouded light source there, whether it's the moon or the sun. It is what it is because it's an art painting. <laughs> All right, now I'll, I'll fill in this area here before we finish it off to the foreground. So that color, let's say that color we had there, can't remember, you can rewind the video and work out what it was. It was the yellow and the green mixed together, but I want to use that to block in. So pretty much along this line here. And just about there. Block it in like that. So we'll just speed this up again while I block all this area in here. Well, I went all the way up to the edge there, just in case it's going to stick through. Now I'm going to get the freckles on me deer foot and I've got some I'll just dampen me brush okay then I'm gonna start bringing some black into it and just I'm just gonna like start here and then when you've done all this you can stand back look at your painting through a camera or something and you can sort of see then where bushes are starting to happen I've got all my freckles where I want them. I'm getting the brush now and across the bottom line here, I'm sort of pushing and scratching in some darker values because you always need the bottom of any bush under shadow and darker values just to make it look like it's some sort of realness there. Now, where's my carbon black? I want to get a bit of the carbon black and the yellow to get some sort of green happening. A bit more yellow now, just to give it that blacky yellowy green colour on those bushes there. Okay, just adding a little bit of white into that, muted it down, and then we'll I'll start up here. This detailing is very time consuming so every now and then I've got to speed these type of videos up just to get this process shown and delivered as we go along. I think I need just a tad more white into that, it's not quite popping. Go. Let's start down here. Alright I'm getting the uh, green over this side now going over those heavier freckles and then we'll grab some yellow and really get some bright 
bright yellow green out of this. Pretty much a lot of yellow and just a very little bit of phthalo blue. I'll do this later, but I just want to show you now because some of it's going to be done off camera. But just it'll highlight all this, give it all its shapes. Just back with the yellow, I mixed with the black and muted it down a bit that we used on this side. I'm just putting that over here now just to change up. Now the <clears throat> colour I just had there, I've just muted that up because I want to start bringing some of them a bit more forward now and distinguishing what's in front and what's behind. So once again I'll just speed this up so you're not missing out on what's getting filmed. There we go. Just carefully putting some of that highlighter colour on this side as well. Not too much, just a hint indicating different areas of bushes. Okay. Just finish highlighting these shrubs all at the front. Okay, I'm just get this along here somewhere, keeping that dark. Don't cover too much of that dark. I nearly went a bit too high then, Ian. All right, I've just dried that, what I've put on. Now, see the, let's say here, we want to continue this out onto here a bit. So I'm just going to stamp in the appropriate background colour for that. And I want to have a look in my monitor and just see where else I can... Um, so I'm bringing it down now. Okay, you got me? I could probably just have this bit here coming down as well. Just so we haven't got a factory straight line there, it looks a bit silly. Okay. I've dried that and I want to get our freckles in here. So we pretty much, oh, not to get blobby. <clears throat> See where the green is? The green's already dark. So we're going to come from there to keep our bottom here green. We'll get all this freckled up. There we go. Now going back to the first colour that we had before we muted it down to highlight it, we're putting this in there. And we want this ridge like it's coming down from up there. Now grabbing that muted colour again and we want to continue that foliage shape coming down the ridge now. Now we're going back to this flavour green, they're pretty much the yellow green on a fan brush. And on the foreground here we want to leave some dark but we want to get some, um, let's get some I'll use this, this stick here, Let's see how we go. We just want some um, grass, keeping the darks in their appropriate areas. If anything, you want to try and keep these straight. Use a whatever brush works for you. I'm just going to Lotch it on for now and detail it later. That's the colour I want there. Keeping the dark. Where's that colour there? I could probably scoot in a bit more dark if I feel I've lost it. Now I've got this flat brush again just so as I can tracing all my ground foliage. Now this I can shape. I want to keep the darks under the shrubbery and come to it. I've just 
just added some white to that mix and in the center here I'm just sort of giving a bit of white <clears throat> I don't know change up the values the light values a bit more give it a sense of realism in the ground now just getting burnt umber on me filbert I'm just putting a outline of a tree well, just roughly where I want his trunks to go or his branches sorry not his trunks his branches and we'll do something on the other side so this one could come up here into the middle start from the trunk again and probably come something off there I like the way that faded so I might leave that like that it's given the trunk now when you bend these down it gives them the illusion they're pointing backwards or forwards which is quite good now we'll just put one about here and something about out here somewhere I've got, a, I've got a thick liner brush. I don't know what number it is. The paint's covered it all up. And this here, I want to detail now. So bring him a bit to where I wanted him to go, like that. And give him some other branches coming off it. And then we'll detail this branch. Just got some black on me script line. I want to trace up some black elements in the tree. And another thing I want to do is emulate some just shadows of the other trunks on the other trunks. So like the shadow of this, you know, just here and there that might not match if it but it gives it a sense of um belonging as well just within here and there everything where they cross over all the little fine breaky off bits okay i've just sunk that down this trunk here and i might put some sort of shadowy thing there I'm not sure how's it gonna work will it work or will it not anyway I'll sign this be sure to check out the links in the description below all my art tutorial paintings are for sale uh, they're done through PayPal and check out the link for my art group page be request to become a member of my art group page as well all right There we go, that's not too shabby, hey? Got a bit of an emerald forest happening there. We've got some foreground trees. Got some um, light source happening in the centre there, just like that. And the foreground here. And we also got it in a frame, hey? If you like what I've done, you tell your friends. But if you don't, tell everybody. Goodbye, good luck, and good on ya.